Welcome to Advanced Quantum Chemistry and my final lecture about Hartle-Fock theory. In this lecture I want to discuss how one actually solves the Ruthans equations in practice. And uh, this, the procedure is actually called the uh, self-consistent field procedure. As we have discussed in the last lecture, the Fock operator depends on its own eigenfunctions. Meaning the Fock operator, in order to calculate the Coulomb and exchange operators uh, in the Fock operator, we need to know uh, orbitals because we have to describe the other electrons by some uh, spatial orbitals. And in Ruthan's formulation uh, of the Hartle Fock equations, this means that in order to calculate the uh, exchange and, and Coulomb operators, we need to know uh, some molecular orbital coefficients or density matrix. Now, we only have uh, solved uh, Ruthan's equations correctly then if the eigenfunctions of the Fock operator, the molecular orbital coefficients, are the same as the molecular orbital coefficients which we have used to uh, generate the Fock uh, operator, meaning the Coulomb and exchange operator. And therefore, it's called uh, um, a self consistent approach. Uh, a field because uh, um, the Coulomb and exchange operator generate or uh, represent the field in which the electron moves um, and uh, we have obtained the solution if if this field is self-consistent consistent meaning the orbitals which it generates are the same as the orbitals which are used to calculate the field. Okay, so how, what do we do in practice? Well, the first thing is of course we have to specify a molecule or if you're interested in atoms uh, uh, then an atom. But for a molecule we have to specify uh, coordinates for the nuclei. So we have nuclear coordinates and, and charges of the nuclei and we need to know the number of electrons. But we don't have to specify any bonds or which atoms are, are bond to each other. That is something which we can get out of a calculation to a certain extent by analyzing the results. As the input we only need uh, a nuclear uh, uh, positions and uh, charges and the number of electrons. Then the next uh, point is we have to choose a basis set and uh, there will be another lecture about uh, what kind of base sets they are and what, what one has to consider there. If you have chosen uh, a basis set then we can calculate all the kind of integrals uh, which go into the uh, Fock operator. So there's this uh, um, set of core integrals, which are the kinetic energy integrals and the um, electron nuclear attraction integrals. There is the overlap matrix, so the matrix of all the overlap integrals between the basis functions. And then there are all the two electron integrals in the basis of the basis functions. So these we can uh, calculate before we start the self-consistent field SDF procedure. The next thing which we have to do is to guess a density matrix or guess uh, molecular orbital coefficients. Because uh, in order to calculate the uh, Coulomb on exchange contribution to the Fock matrix, we need uh, um, a density matrix or molecular orbital coefficients. There are several possibilities. The uh, cheapest and probably worst uh, version is just to set the density matrix equal to zero. Um, or to set the molecular orbital coefficients to zero um, because uh, that means then that we completely ignore electron-electron repulsion. So the only interaction the electrons have are with the nuclear charges and there's no electron-electron repulsion and um, if we diagonalize then the Fock matrix in this form and get, get orbitals then uh, as a natural consequence of the fact that we have ignored the electron-electron repulsion is that the orbitals are going to be much too small, much too compact because the electrons don't repel each other. Uh, a better choice is to use some other models, some other uh, um, simple models, like for example uh, extended Hückel, to uh, make a small extended Hückel calculation for the same uh, molecule and get a density matrix from that. Now if we have a density matrix we can calculate this a uh, G matrix, which includes uh, um, the um, integrals from the Coulomb and that uh, exchange operators. And with that, we can finally build 
the full fog matrix in the basis of the basis functions. So then we have the fog matrix. Uh, we have also the overlap matrix that we already had. So we can set up the eigenvalue problem and then just call uh, a normal linear algebra uh, routine to solve such a generalized eigenvalue problem. Um, as a result of that, we will get um, the eigenvalues, which are the orbital energies, and we will get um, the molecular orbital coefficients, and from these molecular orbital coefficients, then we can calculate in this way the density matrix. What we then have to do is to check whether uh, the density matrix is, which we get here, is different than the one we started with. And of course, in the first iteration, that's definitely going to be so, but after some uh, iterations, the, the differences are going to be smaller, and one has to set a threshold, or one every program sets a threshold, how small the difference uh, between the one we started with and the one which comes out has to be. So how self-consistent uh, um, it has to be. Now, um, if they are the same or sufficiently the same, then we're done, we're finished. We found the molecular orbital coefficients and with molecular orbital coefficients, we can then uh, calculate the molecular orbital by making the linear combination of the basis functions. If they still differ too much from, in, from each other, the uh, density matrix which comes out here and the, uh, from the one which we stopped in here, then we just go back to step five and calculate a new fog matrix with this new density matrix which we have obtained as the solution uh, from, from diagonalizing <coughs> the fog matrix. And then we have to solve uh, equation 84, so the uh, Ruthans equation once again. We get a new density matrix, we compare it with the one we used to calculate the fog matrix, and again, if it's still not converged, we iterate. And uh, we iterate until the difference is uh, small enough.